Good morning, YouTube. How's it going? I'd like to thank you for spending your time with me here. Try to give you a little education on German handmade marbles. These are going to be some of your oldest marbles that you find out there in the world, if you're able to even find these. They're getting harder and harder to find every day. These would be not per se your very first marbles. The German handmade marbles were probably the first marbles that were mass produced to people. Uh, the German marbles were actually recorded to being started made around 1845, I do believe. And people, this is just all my opinion, what others have told me and learned. Nothing's gospel. I'm trying to tell you what I think is the absolute truth, but this has all been passed down to me from old timers from years and years. So if I tell you something wrong, it's not gospel. It's what I think and what I've been told. So I'm just sharing it with you here. Anyways, the Germans started making these by hand around 1845. Around 1870, they started mass producing these marbles. Um, one of the real easy ways, I'll pick this big huge one up here to show you. They have what's called pommel marks on each end, like the Earth's axis, 180 degrees out from each other. There's going to be scissor marks where they cut the glass from the marble originally. Um, it's a little easier to see on these swirls here. You can see at the very end, and they're called pommel marks, someone originally snipped this glass off of a cane, and they made these by hand. Um, I have a cane of glass over here that I can show you. Maybe you guys will understand a little better when you see how these were done. But an artisan would take a flat cane of glass, and he would lay all these colors on it. He would be then twisting this flat cane of glass into this round piece. Once he would get this piece made and twisted, he would then start taking these marbles off one at a time and cutting them with scissors. And this is what would be left behind. It's called your pommel mark. That's what German handmaids have. So one man was producing each one of these marbles individually back in the day. Okay, in 1890, the American machine-made marble started showing up, okay? So they can make thousands of marbles a day in a machine. So obviously, the artisan or the artist that made each one of these marbles by hand can't compete with that. Just like your job that you're going to today, a machine will replace you. Whether you want to admit it or not, that's what's happening in the world. Um, anyways, these marbles are never very round. They never really rolled real straight, so the machine maids always were a more desirable marble to play a game with because these didn't roll real straight. They broke fairly easy. Um, the glass wasn't nearly as durable as a machine made marble. Um, these marbles here were called sulfides, and these all had an animal inside them. This is what the adults would have played with back in the day. It was more like a yard game, and these marbles, when you find them in their original condition, they're usually always destroyed because the guys would roll these around in the yard and bang them into each other, where the kids had them inside, flipping them with their thumb. The guys were outside, you know, throwing these sulfides like a baseball, basically. So this one here has been polished. Someone polished this rabbit, this sitting rabbit, and you can see how the animal's all off-centered. Now, to me... You just completely ruin a marble when you polish it. I know lots of guys out there talking about polishing their marbles. And to me, if you polish a marble, an old German handmade folks, you might as well just take the patina off your priceless rifle or your coin or what have you. I'll give you an example of a polished marble. So the pommel marks that I talked to you about, you can see where someone polished this one and actually blew right through it. This marble, folks, to me is completely worthless. I would rather have it with the chips and dings any day than some buffoon out there putting his paws all over this priceless 100-year-old marble and trying to get the history off of it. So to me, whoever polished this marble, you did a great job. It looks beautiful, but you ruined it. So, you know, everybody's entitled to your opinion. That doesn't mean it's right. Some people would probably much rather have this nice and flawless wet mint looking. Me, I would rather have it with the history and the chips because... Some kids played with this thing, and those got there, that gives it character. So, but you just can't find these good marbles anymore, folks. Um, I'll go over some, this big huge one here, everybody keeps asking about, that's an onion skin. It's called an onion skin. 
Um, one like this. This is a yellow Lacentino core. You can see if I can get the camera to focus. You can see the lattice work inside there. And a yellow one, the white one, the white centers are the most common. This one's been polished also, folks. Somebody just couldn't resist. It's very, very lightly polished, but someone's polished that one also. Um, I'll show you some of my favorite marbles here. These are German handmaids, and uh, they're done on a black glass or an opaque base, and the stripes are laid down over the exterior of the glass. Um, some of the Indians are called mag lights. You could actually take an old mag light and hold it up to the Indian and it would glow. That's where the term mag light came from. Those are usually made from a dark purple or a dark blue. Now this Indian is one of my most prized ones. This would be an end of day Indian where the artisan at the very end of day would use the scrap glass and pick it up. These marbles were usually never sold. They were brought home to their children or gifted to neighbors or friends. The end of day marbles usually only have one pontal mark on them because it was the last piece of glass. It's not going to be snipped from both ends. And that's one of the ways you can tell an end-of-day marble. And an end-of-day marble could be a Lutz, it could be a ribbon core, it could be a Lacentino swirl. It doesn't really matter. An end-of-day marble is anything the artisan wanted to do. Um, you know, the machine-made marbles took over in the world, and uh, the handmade marbles just obviously could not compete so that was the end of them and uh, they're really desirable you just do not find them anymore um, these are a bunch of peppermint swirls um, some of your real desirable peppermint swirls i'm not even sure if i can get the camera to focus but if you look in the blue on the peppermint swirl you'll see it has mica in it and that is a mineral it's a fleck it looks like silver glitter and they put these in some of the rare peppermint swirls, and they are some of the most desirable of the peppermint swirls. Um, some other marbles I really like and are usually always really beat up, and these are clams broth. They come with an opaque base, and they'll have the stripes on the exterior. And the clams broth marble, the glass, is very, very delicate, so they're usually always chipped up and beat up. If you ever find a nice one, folks, and you like them, never pass it up because you will never get a second opportunity to find a nice clams broth marble. Um, here's one that's also pretty rare. Um, people call them gooseberries or corn huskers. This is a caramel-colored marble with a yellow stripes on the exterior i really like these these are an oddball rare marble you don't see too much um, some other marbles that are pretty desirable are what they call lutz they have a, looks like gold glitter in them these are some of your more pricier marbles these are also german handmaids you can tell they all have a pontal mark on them or both ends um, and the sparkly Lutz can be in any marbles. You, I have seen, you know, it's marbles. Every time you think you've seen everything, you go to a new show and you find a collector and they have something you've never seen before. So if you enjoy German handmade marbles, um, I can post some more videos. If you people don't give me a thumbs up or comment and let me know you're interested, there's no sense in me doing this videos. Um, to everybody out there who watches YouTube, people who do these videos, it takes a fair amount of work to do a video. I don't put a lot of effort in it. I'm just a guy with standing here with a cell phone trying to share some information with you. But uh, these YouTube posters, give them a thumbs up and a comment because it takes quite a bit of work to do this. And if you're motivated enough to watch the video, at least to give us a thumbs up or something to let us know you like it. If not, there's no reason for us to do this stuff. So here's some of the most controversial marbles. These would be cat eyes. Uh, they're starting to become collectible to machine-made marble. Um, these are American cat eyes, and uh, the glass is clear on American cat eyes. Your cheap cat eyes are all going to have a green tint to the glass. So if that helps you people out, I try to stay away from them. I've, my, this is just my opinion, but a cat eye is slingshot material. That's what they've always been used for. For me but it doesn't mean people don't like them and don't collect them they're just uh, too many of them for me to really get into um, this is a nice grouping of machine made marbles machine made marbles are going to be perfectly round they're not going to have pontal or scissor marks on them 
Um, in this case, there's some acros, some alley agates, some vitros. Uh, it's just a good collection of uh, machine-made marbles in there. Um, here's just some more German marbles. These are all Germans. Um, to get to your oldest marbles, your oldest marbles are China clays. These are going to be your absolute oldest marbles and your Indian marbles. Uh, they come from China. There's glazed ones. Some of them have a glazing with stripes and lines. But those are your absolute oldest marbles. Um, in my opinion, the clays and the China marbles, uh, they're only worth what you can really get somebody to pay for them. Um, they can repop them. You have to be very careful in today's world. Um, here's some Indian marbles. Those could have been made by Native American Indians. Uh, anybody that can roll a ball of clay and throw it in the fire can make a clay marble. So once again, the real value of a clay marble is what you can get someone to pay for it. And uh, folks, at the end of the day, anything, the true value of it, it doesn't matter what you read in the book or what Bob got for it or anything like that. At the end of the day, the value of a, anything is what someone's willing to pay for it. So, anyways, here's some machine-made marbles. Um, here's a, this is an alley agate, you can tell. They're one of my favorites as far as machine-made goes. They always have such beautiful... Uh, colors and the way the glass comes together but um, you know folks these are more Germans here in this section I don't really know what to say about collecting marbles if you're just getting into it um, this collection I started in the 70s and you just can't find these things anymore people so if you have the cash and you find a marble that you like you better buy it because it probably won't be there next time you go looking for it um, I'll share another one of my favorite German or German handmaids with you. I really like the Indians, folks. But this little Indian here is just unbelievable. It's absolutely stunning. There's just so many colors in it. It's probably one of my absolute favorite marbles. Um, one other quick type of marble I didn't go over is agates. Agates are actually real stone. Um... And I don't collect these anymore either. Back in the day, these were more valuable than a German handmade because they were turned from real stone. But in today's world, there's so many frauds. This one's called a goat's eye. If you stand from a distance, you can see. But this is made from, these all, these are made from agate or some type of mineral. Um, this one here would be called a bullseye agate. You can see the beautiful rings on it. And this is real material. It's just been turned, it's a piece of stone or precious stone that was turned into a marble. And, uh, you know, in the 1800s, these were, these were the rich kids marble, these, these type agates, the real agate. The machine-made marble, acro agate, they basically ripped off the name agate from these marbles and made machine-made marbles to sell to the kids. Um, you know, they, they can be very large, too. This is an agate. Um, we also have Bennington or pottery salt glazed marbles. Um, this would be a clay. This is what's called a fancy Bennington. This is a clay marble, and they put a salt glaze on it, just like your salt glazed crocs would have, or pottery. Um, so it's, it's basically a pottery marble. In my opinion about these two, um, obviously this fancy one is the most desirable of the collectibles. Um... Another way to tell Bennington's a lot is they have eyes on them. I don't know if you can see that. That's a, it's a defect in the salt glaze. And most people believe it was where the marbles touched together in the furnace during production. But that is actually not true. These marbles used to sit on a three-legged or a four-legged stand. And they would go through the oven like this. And when they set on those pegs, when it came out of the oven, those little eye dots on that Bennington marble, that is where it set on the stand when it went through the oven. So if that helps you out any in identifying a Bennington, um, you know, and then here's some other things that are kind of rare. This is a Lucite marble, and it actually, I've seen him say many things, but this one says, Do unto others as you would have done unto you. And uh, some of them say, like, best friend and things like that. But um, marbles are really neat. I really like collecting them because they don't take up a lot of space. Oh, and one more machine-made marble before I get out of here. 
this is a guinea and this is a very desirable marble it's a machine made marble and um, they basically would pick up the scrap glass and put it on the exterior of the marble and it gives you this beautiful beautiful polka dots and specks and this one is a red base but um anyhow marbles are just awesome i really like them and when i was a young kid I used to try to collect these right here every time I would go to the shows. I was after these big, huge ones. Now that I'm coming up on being an old man here, my favorite marbles are to collect are peewees. I like the really, really small ones. And um, here are some of my smallest marbles. They're smaller than a piece of lead out of a pencil, so I have to keep them in a jar. Sorry I can't get this phone to focus. Um, I don't have a nice camera or anything, folks. I'm just a guy doing no editing, holding a cell phone, trying to share my marble collection and give you a little education. So, you know, don't be too hard on me about the shaky video because I'm standing here holding a cell phone doing this for you. Um, back to the German handmaids real quick. Um, uh, here's some micas. Uh, they got a bunch of the beautiful glitter inside them. Um, they're becoming quite valuable anymore. They didn't used to have such a price premium. Here's another big beautiful onion skin, but these are all German handmaids. Um, this would just be a basic, this is probably a machine made. This is what you call a cleary. Um, you know, the kids used to call any marble that didn't have anything in it, it was just one color and transparent, would be known as a cleary. Um, sometimes if they had some glitter or something in them, they would call them sparklers, but, um, you know, and in case you're wondering, this thing is called, I've had a few people ask, these are Fisher jewelry trays, and uh, it's a brass piece, and they just, it's what they look like, they just stamp some marbles in them, that one's actually missing the bottom, there should be a little cap snapped on the bottom that says Fisher jewelry tray, that one's missing, I think this one's missing on this one too, nope, that one's got the base on it, so if you're into these Fisher jewelry trays, you can see 90% of them are missing the base, there you go, you can see that one has the bottom on it, and I'll show you what it looks like once again, missing the bottom, just in case you're into Fisher Jewelry Trays. That one's missing the bottom. So, anyways. But, yeah, I like the German Handmaids. That's what I've tried to collect. Um, I hope you guys enjoy this. And uh, if you do, give me a shout out. Let me know what you're interested in, what you want to see more of. And, uh, once again, thanks for spending your time with me here this morning. And uh, I hope you enjoyed my YouTube video. And if you have some marbles or you want to trade marbles, uh, leave me a comment. Have a great day, YouTube. Thank you for your time. And remember, be nice to others. Don't forget, thank a veteran. Because without them, you wouldn't be free.